Taiwan UK is, girl, it's a mess. The couples are meeting exes and families and some people's true colors are starting to show. Okay, so here's my theory on Catherine. I am pretty sure that the moment that she found out that Freddie has cheated in his past, she got the ick and now she's not feeling him anymore. And now every single thing that he does is pissing her off. You know like when you don't like somebody, like probably back when you were in elementary school or something or middle school and you didn't like somebody and literally just them being in the same vicinity and breathing the air that you're breathing just irks you to, to the deepest core of your soul. That's what's happening with Catherine. Everything that Freddie does is just making her just throw him daggers. They went on that little shopping trip and Freddie made a very obvious joke about them having that very cute shoe in a size 11 and she was like like he ran over a bus of uh small school children or something you got them in an 11. <laughs> oh. but then she saw his house and she was like oh this makes me see him in a different light like money light i don't know i don't know what she's meant by that I've been seeing in the comments on the last video, which I'm gonna be responding to, that some of y'all said, y'all think her tone changed the moment that she saw Ali because she's more attracted to Ali. So she's purposely trying to sabotage things with Freddie. And I see why y'all can think that, but I don't think I don't think that that's why she's acting like this because that would absolutely be so wild of her. Freddie is not unattractive. I think he's attractive. He isn't unstable. So would she really be willing to throw that all away just because Ali is more her typical type? I truly do think she she just can't see past the cheating. And for me, I'm kind of like, eh. Now listen, I believe that I am of the belief that once a cheater, always a cheater. But also at the same time, we also have to give people room to grow and learn and change. Overall, as a society, especially right now, this day and age, 2024, we tend to one and done people. Oh, you messed up one time in your life, you're done. Like you can't do anything else. You can't have growth. You can't do this. Kind of like when people pull up tweets from back when someone was in like high school and they're like, look what they said when they were 16. Yeah, you said some dumb shit when you were 16 too. You know what I mean? Not saying that Freddie cheated when he was 16. I'm using that as an example to show that if you don't allow people to grow and change, then what is the point? It's like you wanna shame people for doing something and shame them for changing. You can't have it both ways. People need to be, in most cases, some people do things that they should not be forgiven for, obviously. So don't be like, oh, she forgives everyone, no. But where's the room for growth if you're gonna hold him cheating against him when he didn't even cheat on you, you know what I mean? Now, if it's starting to look like a pattern and it's like, oh, this is just what he does, then of course, you need to move on because clearly that's just a personality trait of his. But right now he's saying it was one time. You only know that it was one time. So I'm not really seeing the issue here, especially because again, it didn't happen directly to you. It happened to some girl you don't even know and you don't know the circumstances. I think that if she would have been willing to have a conversation with Freddie and not saying that the details would have changed him cheating or whatever, but if she would have had the conversation, talked through it, got more information about it, maybe they could have been on a better trajectory, but she's taking the stance of being passive aggressive about it. She's taking the route of nitpicking at every single thing that this man is doing. Like being annoyed with the fact that he is jokey in nature. When she's been kikiing at his jokes the whole time in the pod, she was kikiing all day. But now all of a sudden you don't like that he's a jokester. Freddie said he would tone it down, which I also don't think is good. You should feel comfortable around someone, especially if that person is about to be your spouse. You shouldn't have to tone anything down. Of course, there's a time and place to be serious, but I really have a hard time believing that Freddie, who is a freaking funeral director, doesn't know when to be serious and when not to be serious. And I think that Freddie's sister is absolutely right. Like you still got to be your own person. If she's not making you feel like you are good enough, maybe the question is, is she good enough for you? Y'all, I definitely shed several tears when I saw Freddie's brother. Ugh, I miss my sister. Show me where Freddie's been on an airplane. I'm gonna call her later today. She gonna be wanting to talk to me because she a teenager right now and she going through her low. I'm a teenager phase, but I be missing her, especially when I see someone else with Down syndrome. I'm just like, oh, my, my heart, my heart. I truly just can't explain unless you have a sibling or a close family member with Down syndrome. I can't explain the connection. Like the bond is just, the bond is bonding. When Freddie hugged his brother, I was like, those are the kind of hugs that I give my little sister. I love that Freddie loves on his little brother. It just warms my heart. He does not, however, love on Catherine. She said that he allegedly told her that if she were to walk around naked, he wouldn't even notice. All the girls have bought sexy underwear. I was like, I haven't. And he was like, Catherine, you could walk past me butt naked and I wouldn't even realize. That's such an odd thing to say if he did say it. But right now, I feel like I can't even trust what Catherine says. So I don't know if that man said that. Because I do feel like she's setting some double standards with Freddie to get him caught up on purpose. Maybe she is trying to sabotage it, but I don't think that she's sabotaging it because she wants Ali. I think she's sabotaging it to make it look like it's his fault because 
she doesn't want to be with him because he, in her eyes, is a cheater or has cheated in the past. The moment that she saw Sam, she kept saying over and over again, oh my God, he looks just like my ex, spitting image of my ex. Oh my God, he really looks like my ex. Now, if one plus one is two, and two plus two is four, what the fuck is this? Because if you are saying over and over that he looks like your ex, clearly that means that you dated someone who we're gonna assume you were attracted to. And if you were attracted to someone who looks like Sam, then if we keep going, you basically telling me that you're attracted to Sam. She looks like my ex. Like, What's that? The image of my ex. But then she gets mad when she asks the question, what do you think of the other girlies? And Freddie is like, oh yeah, Charlotte, who we all know, I've already said she is what most people would consider traditionally attractive, a lot of men are gonna be attracted to her. I said that way back in my first video on episode one. You know that Charlotte is attractive. We know that Charlotte is attractive. So why are you asking him about what he thinks about these other girls if you don't wanna hear it? What do you think of all the girls? Charlotte, I spoke to her briefly. She's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think she's attractive. Well, I heard you the first time. You don't know when to stop, do you, babe? <laughs> and then you get mad after you just sat here and told him 20 times that you think Sam is attractive? That's a double standard because you just did the same thing, if not worse, because you said you actually dated someone who looked like him. So we know that you would make the move and make the move you did. She had the nerve, the gall and audacity to walk her ass over to Sam and start flirting with him and pause because as I'm editing this, I just noticed that Sam had his hand all on her waist and her lower back. What the hell is going on here? And then be like, I didn't know I was flirting or try to do what a lot of people do and say, oh, well, it may just come off as flirting, but I'm just being nice. No, you just being flirtatious. Meanwhile, Sam is giving his whole rundown. Uh, yeah, this my age, this is what I do for work, all this stuff. They on a whole damn first date right there in the middle of the mixer. She telling him she wants his bracelet. How is that not crossing the boundary? And how is that definitely not flirting? You a whole engaged woman telling another man that you like his engagement ring better. Not only that, but that you want it. Throw the whole damn girl away at this point. Freddie does not deserve that and neither does my little brother, okay? I'm so done with Catherine. I also don't like how she's using her trauma as an excuse to be a shitty person. I got bullied a lot as a kid and that's probably why I'm fiery and why I'm sassy. I have enough trauma for five different people. It's not an excuse to be an asshole, contrary to popular belief. You may not have been able to control anything traumatic that happened in your childhood or even when you were an adult. You probably didn't have control over anything traumatic that happened then. But what you do have control over is how you behave right now as an adult in this moment. And you 1 million percent have the responsibility not to be an asshole. If you find that you are acting out based off of trauma, and I think that later on when her and Freddie were having that conversation about the prenup, she was like, I don't have to change anything. I'm willing to do it. No, you do have to change because you shouldn't want to go through life being a jerk just because of your past experiences. You know what you do if you have that problem, if your past is affecting your current state too much, you go get therapy. That's what you need to do because clearly you have not worked through the issues. Now her friends definitely had some thoughts about that prenup and so did y'all. In the previous video or maybe two videos ago, I think I mentioned, why did I just clap? I said I would never sign one and I still think that I feel that way, but y'all did provide a few good examples on why they could be beneficial. But what y'all didn't do is tell me a scenario or a situation where you think a prenup would benefit the person, man or woman, who went into the relationship without the money. I would love to hear a concrete example of when it would benefit someone who didn't have the money versus benefiting the person who does have the money. All of that said, my prediction on these two for wedding day is that both of them are going to say no. They are clearly having issues and it would be idiotic for either of them to say yes. Now, Catherine might get desperate and say yes because of that, but I'm looking at Freddie's face. I'm hearing what his sister is saying. That man has people he has to you know, think about and take care of. The vibes are just not vibing. Hey y'all, it's Nate. Welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. This video will contain spoilers for Love is Blind UK episodes seven through nine. So if you haven't seen it yet and you do not want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. You are about to hear my thoughts on episodes seven through nine, but of course I want to hear yours. So feel free to drop your thoughts below if you do want to participate in the conversation. And give this video a like before you go so I know you enjoyed it. If you want to keep the conversation going after this video, feel free to head on over to my Discord server. It's a place for us to chit chat outside of YouTube and it's free so why not the link is in the description box i am going live tomorrow august 16 at 5 p.m pst we are going to be talking about all the release episodes of love is blind so feel free to come through if you have a moment now maria is claiming that they're going to be able to get past the fact that he judged her for her job but i don't think they are i hope she's right but what i really think is going to happen is that tom is going to go from judging out loud to judging her silently 
he's not going to forget about it because that's his point of view on it. I cannot stress enough with these two. Their basic values are not aligned. Now, as a woman who has been on her fair share of first dates or first couple of dates or whatever the case may be, I know exactly what Maria was doing. I guess it was an ice cream date or something when she offered to get the check. Listen, nine times out of 10, when a woman is offering to pick up the check, she is doing so to be courteous. I have never had an expectation when I offer to pick up the check on any number date that a man is going to let me pick up the check. You know what we want to hear when we say, do you want to split it or do you want me to get this? We want to hear, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. Or my personal favorite that I've ever heard, I got you. I'm not hurting, period, because his pockets were not hurting. I immediately, and when I say immediately, I mean got the ick anytime a guy said, yeah, let's split or yeah, go ahead and get this because why am I getting the check? I'm sorry. A man should pay. My views are so solidly traditional on that aspect. Whenever girls say this, I feel like guys want to be like, y'all wanted equality. Y'all, y'all was asking for that. I wasn't in that group. See, y'all grouping me in with other people. I never said that. A man should pay for all the dates realistically if we're going to be real, not just the first date. And a man should be the provider. That's just what I think. So when y'all throwing out that equality, uh, women wanted equality, y'all could go ahead, just bypass me with that because uh, I'm not in that group of women. Now, I understand that this is different because they are leading to marriage, but they are very much dating right now. And Maria has made it clear since they jump that she values courtship and Tom is not courting her. He's a 50-50 man and she is not fucking with it. Tom needs to go find him a woman that's okay with splitting checks and splitting bills because because Maria is not that woman. I don't care how much she's trying to bend on it. When she met his sister, she was talking about how all the men in her family take care of the wives and the children. Tom is not going to do that. Tom's not taking care of you. This just goes back to the pause when they were talking about this stay-at-home wife thing. And I really need them to see, and quickly, that this is a big deal. This isn't a small thing that you guys disagree on. This is hardwired values within whether it's religion or just general views that you have. How are you willing to compromise on that? You can't. And please don't get me wrong. I'm saying that neither of them should have to compromise. If Tom doesn't want to stay at home, wife, mom situation, he shouldn't have to have that. And if Maria doesn't want a situation where she has to work a nine to five, she shouldn't have to have that either. I'm not saying neither are right or wrong. I'm saying which one I align with, but I'm not saying neither are right or wrong. What I'm saying is neither person should have to compromise. I gotta stop saying compromise because I don't think it's a compromise. I do think it's a settlement on either side. Neither should have to bend on that. She doesn't want to have to help with his mortgage, which completely understood. Why should she? Is she gonna get half of the house in the divorce? No, because he had the house pre-marriage. It's not a marital asset. Now at this pop mixer, Tom is losing it because Tosh is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than he thought she would have been. He thought that she was going to be nerdy and then he realized that she was one of those hot nerds and now he's like, oh damn, maybe I should have picked her. And he's spiraling. Now Maria was sitting at that mixer overly confident, very, very confident. Meanwhile, Tom was over there telling Tosh, yeah, I don't even really know if we're going to be together for real, for real. With two weeks left on the clock until they got to walk down this damn aisle. Like the British people would say, is he mad? And Tosh is just saying, Saying all the right things <laughs> every single right thing that could have been said she said it she left that door open and my boy tom is putting on his running shoes and he about to run through that bitch not tosh being the bitch the door being the bitch now we had a little bit of this last season with i forget their names because y'all know i got adhd and my brain my memories just don't work like that but there was a whole thing last season about is it appropriate for someone to go up to someone who's coupled and you know try to tell them that the door is left open some of y'all didn't like the fact that i said i don't see the problem and i don't see a problem with an ex from the pod letting it be known that those feelings are still there because this is love is blind y'all can say all day it's a real relationship and of course the real feelings are involved but this is not somebody that they've been with for five six seven years that they are engaged to and about to be married this is someone that they've known for three weeks that they aren't sure about if the if another option is there that early in a relationship because that is mad early you wouldn't even consider yourself to be dating somebody three weeks in okay so no i don't see any problem at all with the exes being like hey if this could still work out let me know i'm just not gonna see a problem with that on this show because like i explained this is a show where you get married after like a month so and that little power move that maria tried to pull where she came and grabbed tom oh hey babe you want to go sit over here girl that was too little too late that man was already being swooned by tasha's ass he was already gone girl now i do my best to try to fact check which is reality tv so we'll never have all the facts right when tom and maria were talking about the conversation that we had with tosh and they were going over it tom said she did express you know the fact that she got the big l word out basically she said i love you yesterday 
y'all felt uncomfortable. But what she actually said was... Oh, I mean, I know I told you I like falling in love and I, like, I meant that when I said it. Better believe that he left that part out where he told Tosh, yeah, we not really even sure about if we gonna say yes at the altar and having unresolved feelings. He didn't tell Maria any of that. Either that or the editors just didn't show it to us to cause more drama, but I don't think he told her. He really kind of threw Tosh under the bus to save his own ass, which I guess is expected, but yeah. These two both need to say no at the altar. They would be absolutely insane to say yes. And it would be ridiculous to go through with this marriage. Now see, y'all was making fun of Ben talking about he was corny, he was nomad -y, he was too much of a carefree spirit. But they over here riding bikes and living their best lives. So what y'all gotta say now? Nicole's parents honestly seem really supportive of them. I think these two are gonna be okay. Even after what happened at the mixer. Steven is a good man, Savannah. He was trying to basically calm down Ben, being like, you're good. Remain calm. Don't kick Sam's ass. Be cool. Be cool. Cool. I don't know if Ben is the type to fight and if he would have tried to kick Sam's ass, but he was definitely trying to keep him calm, cool, and collected. And Sam's instigating ass wasted exactly zero minutes getting right to the task at hand, and that was annoying the hell out of Ben. But I do think that the tables have did a little reverse uno, because apparently that first night that Sam and Nicole spent together, Nicole wanted to have sex with Sam, and he said no. And the way that they are phrasing it makes it sound like that's kind of what contributed to the fact that they're not together right now, because she felt that intimacy was lacking. But if we remember Ben also said he doesn't want to have sex right now. And hear me out. I know that we don't like Sam a lot, but Nicole is going out of her damn way to make sure that this conversation about what really went down with Sam that night does not happen. Anytime that Ben tries to bring it up, she's like, I just want to move on. Let's just move on. It's, it's more than just, I'm trying to move on from my ex. It's like she is swerving left and right to not have this conversation. That's what it comes off as to me. Realistically, I think she didn't want that information coming out at all. But Sam spoke his truth and he said it and I can't be mad at him for saying it. So now she's doing damage control and her version of damage control is, I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm focusing on you, Ben. It's only you. And honestly, Ben should have just flat out asked her what happened. But instead, he took the route of being like, well, Sam kept saying some not nice things about you. Well, just because they weren't nice doesn't mean that they weren't true. But yeah, the boys were fighting. When they were going back and forth about which one of them wasn't letting the other one speak, Sam did this. You can listen. <laughs> you keep saying that, mate. Hey. You keep saying, okay. am I going to listen? Like, okay. um, Does she know what happened when she's dead? Oh, sorry. I let you wait till you're finished. Go on. And he knows exactly what he was doing. Throwing out some shady shit just so Ben could be like, wait, what? What'd you say? Nicole definitely has some making up to do with Ben's family. Because they said she left that man in shambles, okay? And they did not like her because of that. But they seem to come around to her fairly quickly. So like I said, I think these two are going to be good. His sister did bring up the fact that he's a nomad, which we all know. And Nicole knew as well. And it does seem like she's kind of questioning if he's going to feel too tied down or maybe stuck if he gets married. But... I don't think he's going to have that problem. I think they'll be able to work through it. I think they're both going to say yes at the altar. And I think they both should say yes. When it comes to Jasmine and Bobby, what's y'all take on the whole social media thing? I've never had an issue with a partner being on social media too much, scrolling too much, liking too much. And I don't really think that somebody liking somebody else's pictures will bother me because you have eyes, you can see. People are attractive. However, Bobby also has this whole music thing. And for me, I'm less concerned about him having to be all up on other girls in his music videos and more concerned about the fact that he might be on the show to progress his music career. Because I had no idea who he was before this show, and now I do. And if I go watch some of his YouTube videos, I'm giving him recognition, which if that's what he wanted out of the show, then that's what he would be getting. Which... Usually I would say there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously I post YouTube videos and I want recognition for my videos, but I'm not on a dating show saying that I'm trying to find love, you know? Like I'm not lying about the fact that I want my videos to be seen, hello. That's what I'm posting them for. And also just because I love talking about this stuff. But you know what? He does seem like a genuinely good guy, so I don't think that that's the reason that he's here. I think this is one of those rare scenarios where he is an artist who also happens to be on Love is Blind. Not on Love is Blind because he's an artist and he's trying to progress his career. But we might not have to worry about this at all because Jasmine's mom might run this man off. She is obnoxiously overprotective. And I do think that she has pushed a lot of her own insecurities and fears onto her daughter 
daughter, telling this man where he can live, how much he can afford, insulting his intelligence. Like, girl, fall back a little bit. This is a grown ass woman. She's a helicopter mom, a kayak mom, an airplane mom. If the form of transportation exists, that's the type of mom that she is. And it seems like Jasmine is really gonna have a very hard time setting boundaries with her mom. And it's gonna destroy any relationship that she gets in. I think that Jasmine is gonna say yes at the altar. I think that Bobby maybe should say no, but I think he's gonna say yes. And look, I'm not saying that boundaries can't be set with her mom. I think it's possible to set those boundaries and have that healthy relationship. But it's going to be hard. And if Bobby doesn't want to deal with that, then he shouldn't have to deal with that. You enter into a marriage to marry your spouse, not to marry your spouse and their parents. I don't know why it seems like the men this season don't know how to put down a toilet seat. Because past college age, I don't see why you're still having that problem. Like, let's grow up a little bit. Ali does it, and I think that Catherine says that Freddie does it too. But maybe Ali is just forgetting to do it. He opens up about having ADHD and can relate. I actually was recently diagnosed, probably about a year ago. He mentions not being able to finish a book, and that's a struggle that I have. For any of my readers out there, this book is so good. I have legitimately been trying to read it for the past three years. It's a horror novel. It was described it's kind of like the get out of books and it's so good but I haven't gotten past like wherever y'all see that little indentation I haven't been able to get past that point in legitimately two or three years even though I desperately want to finish this book because I just can't sit down and read it it's it really is a struggle I am on medication for it and I take it as needed and it does work I speak a lot slower I'm a lot more focused I can get things done but it also makes me feel really groggy when I come down off of it and that's why I don't like to take it unless I really really need to take it same with my anxiety medicine because I also have diagnosed anxiety. But I try not to take medicine for any of those things unless it's absolutely necessary. Like back in 2020 when we were all quarantined and stuck in the house, I was taking my anxiety medicine all the time because I was on very high alert anxious for weeks on weeks on weeks. I used to share my struggle with it uh, more on my Instagram, but now that I do YouTube, I kind of drop tidbits here and there in my videos, but yeah, I have pretty bad anxiety and when it gets bad, it gets bad. People always have this idea of what they think an anxiety attack lo looks like, but I'm here to tell you that it doesn't always look like hyperventilating or profusely sweating or you can't always see it. Sometimes I can have anxiety attacks that last weeks. And when I say weeks, I'm not over exaggerating. Days, weeks. And I still have to go to work. I still have to show up. It's just on the inside, I'm going crazy. But outside presenting, everything is normal. So you can't always see it. So yeah, be mindful of things like that. Don't ever let anyone dismiss and tell you, well, you don't look like you're having an anxiety attack because what does that look like? You have a version in your head what you think it looks like, but it doesn't look like that all the time. And then with the ADHD, yeah, people don't really want to hear when you're an adult that you have a hard time focusing and getting things done. They're just like, get the shit done because you're a grown ass person. But it's tough and sometimes it is really hard. And Ali was struggling at that damn pod mixer. He could not deny that Charlotte, in fact, was very attractive. But he was like, I'm trying to focus on my pod connection. Like mentally, I'm in the pods right now. I'm talking to Demi, I'm focusing on that connection. Looks wise, Charlotte is mad. Yeah. Berserk. Yeah. Yeah. Sublime. Don't get twisted. However, yeah, yeah. I'm remembering what this experiment is. And don't get me wrong, Demi's fire as well. I'm remembering the connection I made in the pods, what made me fall in love blind, and what got me to this point, and I'm not going back on that role. You mad. Right. And I was like, boy, stop playing. It's very clear that Demi is not your typical physical attraction. You are down bad. Just admit it. No matter how many times he says that Demi is beautiful, which she is, he's still not naturally physically attracted to her. I think that Ali's gonna say no at the altar. Demi's gonna say yes. I saw someone leave a comment saying that they think Ali is stringing Demi along, kind of like Clay did with AD, and I see it. And yet again, Steven and Sabrina is out here making everybody else look like they came to this show very unprepared. Both of them didn't even tell their people that they were going on Love is Blind, and they still out here doing better than all these other couples. They're both saying yes. Let's not even pretend that they're not. Whew, these last few episodes were jam-packed. As I was writing my script for it, I was like, oh, this video gonna be a little longer because it's a lot of stuff going on. Until they got to the dress part. I usually don't really leave my comments on them going dress and tuck shopping because everybody's happy in that moment. Everybody's feeling it. And, you know, we gonna see the dress when they wear the dress. So that is it for me for today. 
I am, it's, what time is it? Ooh, it's 4.30 in the morning. I'm about to get started on editing this. Hopefully I can get it out to y'all early in the morning, earlier in the morning versus later today. I cannot wait to hear y'all thoughts on this. I'm gonna try to sneak me in a nap before I gotta start my nine to five because I've been up for a very long time. I'll be here next week to discuss the final two episodes. I don't think that episode 11 is gonna be the reunion. I think if I remember correctly, what they've been doing for the past few seasons is doing the reunion like a couple of weeks after. I probably will be doing a watch party for the reunion i did that last season for love is blind and it worked out really well so that's gonna take place on discord so if you haven't signed up for discord do that because we can all go there we can watch the reunion it'll be a great time and we can talk to each other while we're watching it tomorrow i am going live to talk about all things love is blind related so come through if you have time and until then i'll see y'all later bye all right oh lord oh my god guys i just got a notification I ordered the Hit Me Hard and Soft vinyl. It is coming today. It is coming today. All right, I'm out of here. I gotta stop all my mics. It's still so I gotta stop my backup mic. I gotta stop my regular mic. I said of my body. Where? from above. Let's do that one more take. That ch I was about to say Chetty. It looks slightly off. Just like literally just a little bit. I don't need to breathe when you look at me. All I see is green. There we go. That looks better. Girl, why do I keep saying anxiety? Because I'm talking too fast because I got ADHD. See how it's all coming full circle? Can't sleep, have you underneath all of my beliefs? Keep it brief. 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 Keep it brief